So in the last video, we got up to having these uh, notifications come up with both the buttons. As you remember, last time only one of the buttons came up. I've set the uh, default to have both of the buttons coming up instead of just one. Now we can press the button. As you can see, this first button makes the notification just disappear. And the second button. And the second button makes the app open. So we've gotten up to displaying the notification with our actions. Now we need to handle the back end. Handle what actually happens when the user presses one of these two buttons back in Xcode. So if you remember, if, so if you watched the first video, you'd know we created this special function down the bottom to handle receiving local notifications. We do a similar thing to handle functions, except this time, of course, it has something to do with functions. So start typing application again, and we're looking for handle action with identifier identifier of course being our identifier for local notification double click that and as you can see we have our function come up here so we, of course we have two different actions so the first action so I'm going to use a switch statement to switch between the code we're going to run for one action to the code we're going to use for the other action so switch uh, identifier of course our string we're going to create a case for our first string, which is action one. Break. And a second case for our action two. Another, another break. And of course, the default. And so we have some errors, just indent that. We just need to put the optional remover there. And what's this error? Copy that. So we have the code that we're going to run for each of these. So if we remember, action one was our background action. What I'm going to do with this one is send another notification to the user. So just copy and paste all this code for creating another notification. Paste it in here. Let's get rid of this line and put in here, you pressed the first option. And we're going to set that to come two seconds after they press the button. And we do not need this. And we're not going to make this an action. So our action one will create a new notification in the background. What should we do with option two? Because option two starts up our application, it opens up the window. This means we can actually do things on the window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an alert. I'm going to open up an alert on the window saying the user message that the user sent. So UI alert view, open that. We want the one without the other buttons. We're going to call this you said. We're going to use, of course, we still have the notification up here. So we can, again, access our um, user information, notification. So user info. Remember our directory we have here with the user message. I'll make it delegate self and we will make this say OK. Okay, so alert dot show, and we'll just show that alert. And I think we need to make sure that this is a string. There we go. Done. Okay, so let's run our app. So let's um our message. Write our message. Close our app, and then there's our message notification. We can press our first action, and a second later. There's our notification for our second action. Here's our message again. Press the second action, opens the app, and here comes our alert saying our message, which is our message, and then our OK button that looks really awkward. So that's how you can do local notifications, both just the standard notifications and with actions. In the next episode of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make, how you can build on this with remote notifications or APNS notifications.